Hey y'all, Jill here. Welcome back to a Spring Willow Farm. I'm about to head back out into the garden. Um, I've been out there all morning clipping, trellising, harvesting. Um, took a break, came inside, working on that focaccia I mentioned yesterday in the vlog. I'm gonna show you guys what that looks like. Then I'm headed back outside to do some more planting and thought I would just take you guys with me. So here was the focaccia. I made a tomato basil pesto. Look at that. So I added the pesto in the actual dough, but then I um, like topped it with finishing salt and fresh cherry tomatoes. And then we use this uh, Squizzitos olive oil with this Tuscany uh, bread dipping. We mix it up, cut some up, do a quick dab. You guys, it is heavenly. Focaccia is definitely my favorite bread to make every week because it's so simple and honestly my family just eats it um, a lot faster than our daily loaf and the daily loaf is way more time consuming especially during summertime when it's my busy season. I just don't really have a lot of time for that. So um, I'm going to put all the information down below if you want to learn how to make sourdough. I actually have a course on it. I teach you guys all the ins and outs of the technical, the art, all the fun stuff so you guys uh, can just look at the link down below. But here's the the harvest from today. Uh, we gave half of this away uh, to our friends and then we had some other friends come by and we sent them off with produce. So I had three crates full um, and then I gave about a crate away. That is the fun thing about farming and community is that there is enough to go around. Um, so again, just our Rebelski, uh, the Secura Cherry. We did actually have one of these. It's called the Margold. Um, they didn't do very well, but I do have one plant that um, withstood. I didn't actually realize it was in there. And it's produced this really pretty streaked slicer. And then over here, we've got cucumbers or carmen peppers. I'm actually going to be putting these in the freeze dryer. And then underneath here, we've got some more tomatoes coming on. So I have been mentioning to you all that we're really about to start shifting and ramping gears into the fall garden, which I have started this on a sheet of paper and July 15th um, is really the start day of when I need to start these things and continue to do that um, throughout the first, second week of August. Um, so I'm gonna talk to you guys about that a bit more as we head out into the garden, um, but that's kind of what this vlog is. Um, I'm planting a lot today, I get asked a lot about when do you plant? What does that look like for you? Is it not too late to start things? Um, and you guys just wait. I'm gonna just load you up with all sorts of information in this vlog. This is also not at all how I recommend storing your seeds, but this is what's working for me right now. Peep that new summer collection. Stay tuned for that this week. Um, yeah, so I've got seeds in here. We're gonna take it out into the pavilion, rummage around see what we've got in here to plant. All right guys, it is 98 degrees outside, which is not at all when I would recommend doing your gardening chores. Um, I would tell you to get up early and work or work later in the afternoon. Now I did get up. Um, we were working at six o'clock this morning. We stopped at one, then I had to feed babies, but the girls have gymnastics tonight and I'm not gonna get home until later. So this was really kind of my only window uh, to get this done. So if you are outside in the heat of the day, just be smart, hydrate. Um, but I've got my seeds here and I'm gonna just show you guys some of the things aside from the crop plan. So I like loosely jotted some things down, but I'm gonna get that massive um, whiteboard that I keep in my greenhouses. I'm gonna do an entire video on how I am planning and structuring that out. This is just, we've got some bare space in the raised bed that I was going to put flowers in and then really just felt this nudge to grow more food. Um, and I can't really explain that other than it was just like this, okay, do not fill void space with flowers, fill void space with food. And so that's what I'm doing. And I get asked that all the time. Is it too late to plant a garden? No, absolutely not. It is 
uh, July 12th here and I am just now planting food. You guys can see I've got beans behind me. That's a bulk of what I'm gonna be uh, putting in the ground today. So I've got more chickpeas I'm gonna be starting and I've just got some different uh, bush beans that we're gonna throw in some loose space. But there are so many other things that you can still be growing, especially if you're in a similar growing zone to me. So I'm in Central Arkansas Zone 7B, which means it is hot as all get out. You guys, it's gonna be hot here until October. Um, and so I've got such a long growing season that a bean is like a 50, 55 day variety, which means I can plant the seed and it will be ready to harvest in 50, 55 days, depending on the variety. So I know that that's August, you know, like the middle of August, uh, I'm going to be the end of August, I'm going to be harvesting uh, beans. And so I've got plenty enough time to just keep doing this succession. Um, and so I could plant those. Um, the chickpeas are fine. I'm trying to see. It doesn't give any information, um, but I know that these are pretty similar. It doesn't take them very long to mature. Um, and then let's see what else we've got in here. Um, I've got all of our grasses, that's flowers. I'm really just looking for vegetables right now. So I did want to grow some quinoa. Um, I originally started these in soil blockers and the soil blockers dried out super quickly. Um, so I'm just gonna be direct seeding these. We are getting um, misters set up in our greenhouse. We're like putting these misters to where they automatically go off and water all of our stuff uh, so many times. So I'm not having to spend as much time in there watering and stuff's not drying out. Um, cucumbers, I'm gonna be starting another round of cucumbers this week. Uh, we'll be starting our um, grain marshal tomatoes. So all of our paste tomatoes we can still be starting. Um, we could start more okra. Um, we could do beets and carrots. So as you guys can see here, there are quite a few things that I'm telling you guys that we can still be cranking out today. My main um, emphasis is on the quinoa and the beans, um, but certainly you can grow a garden Really, if we're being completely transparent, you can grow a garden um, most all the time, right? Um, but it is going to be dependent on what it is that you're growing, the zone that you are growing in, and the measures that you are willing to take to ensure food yield. And what I mean by that is if you are growing in a high tunnel, you can be growing 365 days of the year and it doesn't, your zone doesn't matter. That is the point of a high tunnel is that it is a season extension. And so you can grow even in the dead of winter, even if you are in harsh, harsh conditions and you have a ton of snow, you don't have to worry about that. We don't heat our high tunnel, but some people do. So if you were worried about that, um, you could heat it and insulate it a bit better. Um, if you're growing outside, you can grow things earlier. Think about growing um, your root crops, but let them just kind of stay dormant in the soil throughout the winter and then just go harvest as you need to. I mean, you can have snow and snow and push the snow back and go out and harvest carrots, beets, radishes. I've done it in the past. Um, that's a really good option. You can do that or you can add some sort of frost protection with some PVC pipe with some nine gauge wire over your beds and add a little bit of insulation. They would be called uh, like row cover is what you could do. You can also do that this time of year too and add shade cloth if you're worried about some of your stuff getting scalded. So if you are asking the question, is it too late to plant a garden? Absolutely not. There are going to be things that you can grow. I recommend you know your growing zone. If you do not know what it is, do a quick Google search. I know Farmer's Almanac has really good resources on your zone and each month what you can be starting for your zone, which I found very, very helpful in my beginning years of gardening. Um, it really was a good resource. So today let's plant some beans and some quinoa and let's get some more food growing on my farm. Before we dive into that though, I did just eat a tomato and spinach sandwich on that nice focaccia bread. But I could use a little snack, so we're gonna harvest some beans and see if there's any blackberries ready. Give me a little boost of energy <laughs> to come out here and start planting. I harvested a nice little handful of beans this morning. Um, as you can see, like this trellis is it's just packed full but everything is taking a bit longer to set fruit and i think it's because we were having issues with our well um and they weren't getting enough rain um and you know there wasn't it wasn't irrigating regularly and then with the lack of rain we've been having but now i'm starting to see quite a few of these blossoms very encouraged by that 
So I harvested that side this morning. There's just two uh, cattle panels we have on T-Post. I'll come to this side. Here we go. Nice little snacks. Need a few more of those. I have been sharing the beans with the grasshoppers. As you guys can see here, there are some holes in here um, on the foliage. That's what that is. And I harvested some beans this morning that had little chunks out of them. That's just from the grasshoppers. Um, I don't really do a lot as far as preventative maintenance for grasshoppers. I find that if you plant enough, then there's enough for them and for you. And really just grasshoppers are always kind of like the worst pest I deal with out in the raised bed garden. And I just, I try not to worry about it. I plant these beans in successions um, and it all kind of works out. All right, so I don't have any bush bean varieties out in this basket, but I did remember that I had a seed packet of pole beans in my purse, uh, in my car, because who doesn't carry seed packets in their purse in their car? You just never know when you're gonna need to give a seed away or if you're gonna need to encourage somebody to grow food. And I know that might be silly, but I do usually always keep seed packets in my car for that reason to encourage somebody, hey, maybe you should grow food. So I have got our arch trellises back here, which if you all remember, I had these massive dreams of growing these uh, cherry tomatoes and these heirloom tomatoes on these trellises and I'm failing miserably. One, it is flipping hot, y'all. I know you feel me. Um, and so one, just like, with our well, the pump going out, that really set us back. So that was a good couple weeks without regular watering. Um, and really when it's over 100 degrees, it doesn't take long before things just really start falling to the wayside. Um, so I pulled up the large slicers. So I've got this cattle panel behind me, which is where I'm gonna plant these pole beans on. Um, behind me here, we have our center cut squash. This was that hybrid from row seven, which was a cross between the tromboncino and the uh, just a regular zucchini. Uh, it's interesting. The flavor is very, very unique. I haven't quite decided if I like it or not. So I'm leaving these on the vine to ripen and I'm gonna harvest them as a winter squash and see if it changes the flavor notes at all. So that's the really cool thing about the tromboncino if you're growing it too. You can harvest it young and, and green or you can wait let it fully ripen on the vine it'll turn yellow and then it's like a storage winter squash and that's really great if you're kind of like overrun uh, with a lot of squash so i have very much so neglected the outdoor garden uh, this was the kakuzi squash which is doing really good and then this trellis is where we had uh the center cut and we we've, we've harvested quite a few of these but we are dealing with a massive squash bug infestation uh, so I need to spray these all uh, really well. But right here is where I'm going to be planting the beans on this trellis. Um, I do like arch trellises for this. If you're growing vertically, you can just max out a small space. All right, so I've done some light weeding. Now, there are a lot of different ways, or I oh, shouldn't say ways. You'll see a lot of different people teach differently, whether you plant on the inside of an arch trellis or the outside. In my opinion, I've planted on both. I don't know that it makes a bunch of difference. For me, if I space my trellis further out, and I wanted to plant some sort of like root veggie or maybe some small lettuces on the inside of the trellis. That would be a reason to plant on the outside. Um, but for me, I think traditionally I plant on the outside. I do know some people plant on the inside. You know the cool thing, it doesn't matter whether you plant on the inside or the outside of your art trellis. More than likely if you have sunlight and you have water um, and you're doing everything you need, your plant's still gonna grow. Um, and so it doesn't really matter. And that's one thing I love about gardening <laughs> is that it can be so versatile. There can be so many different ways to do it and by golly, we can all still grow food. So. I'm gonna pop mine on the inside because I'm on this side of the bed. Uh, traditionally, like with all my squashes, I planted them on the outside. Um, that way, you, one, I do think it matters as far as variety. If you're planting on the outside um, with bigger squashes, the hope is that they would just be dangling through and it'd be e easier to harvest. With the beans, they're gonna completely cover everything and it's not gonna matter um, as much. So 
I really like vertical gardening. Um, I think vertical gardening is wonderful if you have small limited space because you can grow up and not out. And you can really just kind of max out that space. But one thing, it doesn't matter if you're growing in a raised bed, in ground, containers, vertical gardening, not vertical gardening, you know, no-till, permaculture, like does not matter. Doesn't matter your gardening styles or preferences. You can still be growing food right now. Um, you can still be succession planting. You can still be having a large emphasis on that and cranking out a large amount of food yield. Um, and it's not prejudiced on uh, the style that you're doing, which is really nice. Uh, so with my beans, you see here on the cattle panel where there's um, like where it comes down. That's just kind of a good reference for me. I'm gonna move this squash back to its designated um, trellis. But where each of these come down, that is where I am planting. And I'm gonna do this for the beans, every single one. So I did just plant one bean. Uh, these are seeds from this year, so I'm not worried about any sort of germination issues. Even on the beans that I've saved the seeds for myself, I typically only plant one. They sprout pretty quickly, um, so if one didn't germinate, you can easily replace it and it will catch up with the other ones. And I space these about six to eight inches apart. There's so much freedom with these beans. And like I said, if you are dealing with like grasshoppers, which is usually what I'm coming up against with these uh, beans, I would potentially throw a couple in there just to know that one might get uh, chomped down <laughs> by a critter uh, before it actually produces but I didn't worry about that today because I do have plenty of seeds I can just go back and fill in all right got that part planted I'm gonna head back up to the pavilion and try and grab those chickpeas uh, garbanzo seed is actually or go garbanzo bean is its technical name um, and throw some of those in. I, I do already have some of those planted, but just not near as much. Uh, we're going through chickpeas quite often as a protein source for myself. Um, and then we're making a ton of hummus right now and chickpeas are kind of uh, the base. All right, so let's go find the appropriate bed for these. If you do have empty beds and you do not feel like planting another succession because it's hot and you just don't wanna have to worry about dealing with the summer heat and the summer garden. Maybe you got your first wave and you're just heavy in the preserving um, and putting up all the crops. You can put a cover crop down on your bed. And there are ones that are specific for winter and summer and spring and all these things. Um, Haas Tools actually has a really, really good resource for like cover crops. Um, I know clover, rye, um, oats, peas, there's like so many different things you can do. I know some people, depending on their zone, are growing like hairy vetch. That's something that we do typically here throughout the winter. Um, and so if you didn't want your bed to just kind of lay, um, you wanted to just add nutrients back into your soil but not worry about harvesting, I think a cover crop would be a great resource. And it's not that you're growing, like you're not growing anything, right? You are literally growing something that's gonna put back into the soil and then you're not having to worry about your soil drying out. You're not worried about erosion issues. You're just feeding it with different types of nutrients. So maybe look into cover cropping too. I got these chickpeas from the Urban Farmer. They were one of the only places I could find bulk. Um, I'm not soaking these. I know a lot of people soak their beans. Um, this isn't really required for the chickpeas. So I'm just gonna go through, weed my space pretty well, and then we're gonna plant these about every six inches. And I'm gonna plant them down this row right here. So if you are like me and you're slightly forced to plant in the hottest part of the day, which like I said, do as I say, not as I do, <laughs> not the best time to plant. Um, and so what I could have done was turn on the drip irrigation and just make sure that these beds were good and saturated before I started planting. Um, but one thing I am going to for sure do is after I plant these beds, turn on the drip for a while and let it run because the bad part about sowing seeds this time of day um, is that they are, the soil is gonna like dry up so quickly. Um, we have really sandy soil, so this is something that I am dealing with anyways in a large way. Um, so just make sure you're watering really well. I would recommend that with no matter what crop it is, even if you are planting at optimal times, right? Say maybe you're planting early in the morning, later in the evening, you're doing all the right necessary things. It's still a good idea to go through 
and water your plants extra well uh, specifically for root crops that's something I get asked often is how do you get your carrots and your beets to grow so well um, regular watering even if you have a drip irrigation situation set up um, is going to be always really beneficial so I am planting these um, about twice as deep as the seed is wide which is kind of my rule of thumb on all things I spend very little time looking at the back of the seed packet um, and I've been doing this long enough to where I can kind of wing it like that uh, but one rule is just twice as deep as the seed is wide and it works really well all right you all I have plenty of more things to plant and weed however time is against me today and that was all I could get done that is something that I also wanted to put in this video if you only have five minutes to plant and weed spend that five minutes planting and weeding and that is succession sowing your succession sowing without even really intentionally meaning to just because of time restraints so say maybe you are an avid gardener but you have a full-time job or maybe you're gardening but you're momming right um, and you just have all these other things that you're juggling we all all get it we all understand so if you come out in the morning and you've got one day a week where you can spend five or ten minutes weeding and planting do that that one week and then the next week come back through and sow some more seeds and weed some more and it's a way to kind of do it without getting burnt out now because this is what I'm doing largely for my job I'm spending hours and hours at a time but even sometimes I don't have enough time to get to all the tasks which is why we try to set everything up on automation that we can all of our timers for our drip irrigation all of our injectors for our fertilizers uh, we try to have it as hands off as we can while we use our hands doing the other things planting weeding things that you can't set up on automation uh, we do have a designated day during the week that we do those things but there are only so many hours in the day so do what you can do really think about succession sowing it'll make it a lot easier on you you're going to stagger that harvest when it comes in which is also going to make it easier on you when you go to preserve um, and put up all of that food that you're growing but let this be your little encouragement you can start a garden right now even if you've not planted a single thing depending on your zone. For most of us, we are gonna be able to start a garden right now um, and you're gonna be just fine because there are so many days still left in uh, the growing season that we can crank out beans, eggplants, tomatoes, uh, root vegetables, different spinach and lettuce varieties that are heat tolerant. There's still a lot of things we can do. So if you're late to the game, do not fret. We are coming up on my favorite time to garden, which is fall and winter. And I'm gonna show you guys so many things you can grow throughout the fall and winter that it might even make you question if you ever want to have a summer garden. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll talk to you soon.